and to Trendy Now. As I said, I'm fascinated by the big cultural divide in the royal family. You've got Queen Elizabeth, King Charles representing duty above all. You've got Prince Harry and wife Meghan Markle putting themselves and their feelings first. And that's a very, you know, woke thing to do. And they're trashing the royals, meanwhile, to earn millions, which they can do because the sense of duty isn't quite there. And they've polarised the world. It's not just them, you see, because you've got many Britons siding with the royal family, quite a few Americans, perhaps less now, a lot of people on social media in particular, siding with Harry and Meghan. Well, we sure have seen that division today. After Harry and Meghan, unlike every other couple in the procession, left Westminster Hall holding hands. Um, again, as they did during the Queen's Jubilee, like they did early this week when they inspected flowers laid for the Queen outside Buckingham Palace. In fact, like they do at almost every public occasion, it's the hand-holding. It's like a trademark. Joining me is Daisy Cousins, Sky News contributor and a YouTube star with her own video channel. Daisy Cousins, it's always great to talk to you. This hand-holding has really divided social media. For some, yes, it's true love. For others, well, how needy is this? And for others, like me, um, it's marketing to sell what they want to, I think, parade as a great love story. Well, look, the hand-holding is, is certainly many things, Andrew, but one thing um, it definitely is is calculated. There is a very, very distinct point behind it. It's also kind of vaguely comical. I mean, watching the, the that very formal procession go by with everyone in military uniforms looking incredibly sombre, standing a very specific distance apart, and then you got Meg and Harry uh, kind of bringing up the rear, holding hands, looking very lovey-dovey. It, it's sort of... It, it's not actually uh, selling the brand that I think they want to sell. I think they just look silly. Uh, but there is actually, there's quite a bit to it. Yes, it, it, you know, it's needy and I agree with you, it's selling a brand. But it's part of a, a pattern of behaviour uh, that Meghan and Harry were engaging in sort of right from the outset when their relationship became public. Now, there is a, con a convention for working royals and certainly there were working royals for a time there. They are not allowed to have any public displays of affection. No hand-holding, no kissing, nothing like that. It's, it's to maintain a kind of formality and make them accessible to the public as they are public servants. Now, at just about every public event they were at while they were working royals before Megxit, Meghan and Harry were always holding hands and touching arms and being lovey-dovey, which was a direct and very deliberate contravention to the rules that they are supposed to follow, the rules and decorum. Um, and it wasn't the only rule that Meghan insisted on breaking. One of the Queen's own rules was that the royals are supposed to to wear bright colours in public so that they can be seen while they're out on engagements. They're not allowed to wear black to daytime events, except for, say, Anzac Day services. So you have event after event after event, Andrew, of Meghan Markle wearing black, like a black moth, was a black fascinator, while all the other royals are wearing bright colours around her. She didn't even sort of look beautiful in black. It was just a totally pointed, I'm going to stick it to these royal traditions because I'm different and I want to be the centre of attention. This hand-holding at this terribly sad formal occasion is simply a continuation of that behaviour from the two of them. And it, it is quite appalling, Andrew, that even the death of Her Late Majesty Queen Elizabeth II was not enough for them to put aside their attention-seeking ways and just follow the protocol. And with, you know, a lot of people forget she's in her 40s. Now, I love holding hands with my wife, but you know, time and place and all that kind of stuff. And, in fact, there was one moment when Harry was giving his speech early this year to the United Nations when, uh, just uh, during the ceremonies, he, he took his hand away and Markle snatched it back and to put it back in her lap. It was a two-handed grab to make sure and she just kept it there. I mean, <laughs> this is a, this is a sort of neediness here or is she scared that if she let him go, he'd go away? 
Yeah, it's really weird. That footage is is so awkward because poor old Harry, I'm sure occasionally he wants his hand free. It was without missing a beat. She didn't even look at him. It was just a sort of, I'm going to, you know, reach and pull it back. It was it was very, very strange. Um, but And perhaps there is sort of a, a kind of neediness and insecurity behind it. But I really think, Andrew, it is to continue to sell that brand, that theirs is a true love story and that they're, you know, new age sensitive it. folks who are in touch with their feelings, definitely. But as you said, they're not teenage sweethearts. Like, it's not cute. She's 41, he's 38. They're far too old to be doing that. They also have two kids and they're members of the aristocracy. Like, as you say, time and place. It's not cute, it's not sweet, it's just kind of weird and I'm sort of sick of it.